Start streaming. Ech. Man, we should be good. I think we're live. Yeah, I think we're live. Whoa. Clutch at Overwatch. Episode oh, 205. Oh, dude, as soon as you go live, my headset is going to... Dude, <laughs> What I the just fuck? had that issue. Dude, this keeps happening. Yeah. Um, so, someone did say in the chat before we went live, my money is on reinforced being late. And I guess that's technically true because I had technical difficulties. Um, someone can probably already tell. Solomon is not here. And so I'm temporarily back to doing production things. And it did not work out <gasps> great. Because I, I copy-pasted my production folder to another hard drive. And so all the shortcuts and connections just like flatlined. And so it just, it's been a nightmare. To help me here, we got Avril, we got Jaws, Steady, Regulars, always on time, always here, always shows up. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. How's it going? No you one else time? is here. If you, you didn't get the hit, time. no one else is here. Connor, too busy with work. Scott? On a plane to Vegas to spend his uh, life earnings on the slot machine. Yep. Do you think? I don't think Scott is a slot machine guy. I think. I think he's like a. No, he's a blackjack guy for sure. Is he? For you know? sure. No, I have no idea. I like blackjack. That was kind of fun. Although I don't spend any money. Can I, I tell my blackjack. casino you, story? You the blackjack guy. I have, yeah, I've been to a casino Go two times. I am twenty dollars up overall. Out of the two times that I've been, I'm twenty bucks up. I'm never going again. I've 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 robbed the casinos blind. I'm twenty dollars. Hey, that's a profit, up, baby. The casinos. Keep gambling yeah. until you make a profit. And then stop I broke even. I, I put and two dollars exactly. in the slots and I got two dollars back. So that's even. wicked. It's like okay. my scratch card luck, actually. I bought in two bought two scratch cards in my life. I'm up one pound. Yep. So we have Jaws, Dominant. who's up twenty bucks. We have Avril, yep. who's up two bucks. No, no, and I'm, I'm down. Breaking zero. Oh, he's breaking down <laughs> several he hundred bucks. So, thousand dollars uh, that's crazy yeah let's not talk about that let's not talk about my casino experiences anyway um avast is not here um at all as you can probably see if you watch the video um i thought he'd be here but then he didn't respond and he was like i can't be on because i'm working sorry so the in the thumbnail we have avast because avast brings positive ceo he brings our Plus EV, SEO returns, you know, we're, we're positive when we have a vast in the thumbnail. Yeah. You should add so, him on every week. He should just always be in the thumbnail just, no matter what. Not here. I, I just, <laughs> I, I prayed. I went to bed last night and I kneed down on my bed and I put up my arms and I literally prayed that a vast would be in the show. But then I responded this morning. I was like, uh, sorry, I didn't respond. I'm busy at work. And so there you go. Sad. It. Yeah. He's, he's so, stuck uh, on the mouse still trying to figure out how to make a fire. Yeah. If your prayers were not answered, what does that mean? Do I time to abandon religion? Like I don't know. Whoever, the, whoever the I prayed to, is. they they did not they did right. not favor me. Maybe maybe they, maybe there was a lesson in there. Lesson in there. Didn't to, make the uh, sacrifice. Make sure the day before that people should uh, be our guests. Um, we also asked Matt, but he said I have calls. Sorry. Um, what what is he calling about? What is blood calling about, bro? What, what is this, going on? I don't know. I don't know. This, NBA? I don't know. NBA, probably NBA is on the phone to his friends. All right. It says here, Jaws is way louder than everyone. But I'm going to just... All right, drag me down. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... his normal British voice. People, people, yeah. people let us know. And uh, if, the, if, if the audio is better. It, it's it quiet is for is. me now, but maybe he's better for everyone else. Uh, what? what just, leave it. If, just, if, yeah. uh, just leave it. If the audience can hear me too much, then... What if yeah, the one dude in chat happen. is just like, it's just that person that it thinks feels loud? Oh, okay. You're getting two guys, oh. I think. A potential two guy situation. Yeah. Yeah. Potential two guy situation. Um, part of the reason why the audio is a bit scuffed, as you can see, I'm wearing AirPods today. So, you know, I, I, I also bought another pair of in-ears. Um, and you might AirPods ask, connected. why? Why, Johnny? Why are you wearing in-ears uh, to the PC? Well, let me tell you. I went to the barber last week. Have a haircut, you know, looking pretty good. You know, if I if I say so myself, you know, I really like my, my, my dude. Um, and he goes, Hey bud, just letting you know. You get a bump in your head. Oh, the headset dent. And oh, I, I had I have a massive headset dent. Like I can feel it now. It's like a valley. It's like a valley in my head. Hey, that's it's, not meant to be permanent though. 
No, it's not. Watch that it's out, not. Man. But I got I got so scared of this dent in my head. I was like, I need to get in ears because I can't live with a dent in my head. I I I'm, I, I I don't know. That was scary to me. I was scary. I mean, I, I was is it as bad as the Tyler skull one, one from from playing video games? The original Tyler one one where it's literally cave and it's just face <laughs> the most <laughs> insane headset end of all time i don't think the, this headset by the way creates the dent because my head is just resting it's not resting on like the beam it's resting on like fabric so it's just my hair that gets at least i hope so because i wear my headset every day as soon as i wake up i wear it for like nine hours is it is it is it this one this one yeah just an yeah. insane <laughs> dent <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> like that's that's crazy yeah like, so i i don't know i just saw that picture and i was like if i if i didn't have hair if i was bald right now i'd walk around with a massive dent in my head and i just didn't want that so i got myself in ears which means audio issues i didn't know ipods connected to well i got a bluetooth stick and put it into oh, my oh okay so my laptop has natural bluetooth but my desktop does not have bluetooth. yeah yeah so I got oh, okay that makes sense but it's pretty chill because it's wireless so you don't have to worry about it um, and it doesn't give you dents in your head. So there you go. That's, that's how my week has gone. Um, that's anyway, really cool. <laughs> anyway, um, as always here on Plat Chat, there is one brand that we just love. They're amazing to It's Manscaped. They're back. Manscaped's back, baby. The season for a fresh cut is finally here. Oh God, already nightmares about dents in my head. <laughs> but the sponsor of today's show, Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming, have just launched their fifth generation performance package to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom. This take care of your special snowflake with a lawnmower 5.0 Ultra and watch your South Pole shine like never before. Get the best stocking stuffer of all by going to manscaped.com and use code PLATCHAT for 20% off plus free shipping. Mrs. Claus will thank you. So there you go. The perfect package 5.0 Ultra. They already have 34% savings, but if you apply the code PLATCHAT, you get 20% off more. So, I appreciate you, PLATCHAT. Uh, meh. No, it's game. I appreciate PLATCHAT. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate PLATCHAT. I appreciate well, PLATCHAT too, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Man. Manscaped. They got these brushes too. They got these yeah. brushes. I, okay. I said this the other week, but the, 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 lather, the latherer thing that they, they put the soap on or whatever, and then you're like doing this thing. That was crazy. I was the saying. soap? Yeah, there's, um, there was one. It, it like came with one of the kits. Um, I can't remember which one, but it was like a latherer thing where you put the soap on and then or whatever. It was yeah, not that... the crop preserver. No? No, no, no. Like, oh, it's, yeah. the, it's the thing there. Body it's wash. the thing there. No, no, body not wash? the body wash itself. The actual scrubber thing itself. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, that yeah, thing. yeah. You put the soap on the thing and then you scrub yourself or whatever. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to pull it up, but I know what you mean. We watched that yeah, dude. We watched that dude. Yes, last yeah, week. we watched that guy. Yeah, and he was scrubbing himself and stuff. Yeah, the body. I, I, I had one of those. Yeah, the body buffer. Yeah, exactly. It looks good. I got one of the, I had one of those things. Net, it's like a net. Yeah, yeah, they, they suck. <laughs> they yeah. actually suck, but yeah. This, yeah, this is the real deal. You scrub? You do some scrubbing, Jack? Or? Do a little scrubbing, do a little scrubbing. Oh. You got, you know, you got to get the, the dazed, like, grime and grit off your body after you've played ranked for, like, nine hours. Or play DayZ and try to survive for nine hours, not getting randomly killed by 10,000 hour DayZ veterans. Oh, we need to yeah, get into that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to hear the talk. Patch out DayZ. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, we should start patch out DayZ. The amount of time we're spending playing the game at this point. Hey man, I'm down. To, you know, if you want to do like a like a general plat chat gaming podcast, I'm down. But anyway, to wrap up here, you know, I feel like Costa really set the precedent this year, at least for Overwatch League talent, to exfoliate skincare routine and that stuff. So the body buffer, that's really just that for your body, you know, exfoliate, nice. nourish, clean. Like I'm getting into that too. Like I got like a whole like you know kit with like different, you know, it's hydration and scrubs and face masks and like all that stuff so you know take care what of an off too. season does to a motherfucker like, <laughs> no no yeah, i, I, I tried that earlier taking care of your skin and stuff yeah i mean, I mean it's look, a good thing i'm it's not, not so going to bed I'm on time it's a good thing, it's a good thing. yeah take, it's a good take thing, care exactly. of your skin for because later on in life uh yeah you won't have such amazing skin but if you take care of it now it will last a lot longer exactly you know, you know who's also really into that jake jake is like yeah hyper he has like the most sick routine and he does like 15 spf or whatever to 
repel the sun to maximize like the retention of he's skin maxing yeah it's it's unbelievable and it, i guess it kind of works because he's looked like he's 18 so you know it, it does work for jake <laughs> so uh i don't know if he, that was a compliment or an insult that <laughs> could be no, he way. looks young he, look, he looks young <laughs> bro looks like vibrant. a child bro looks like he just <laughs> leveled up from minor to, to almost adult that, Look, that I don't. I mean, if if you compliment <laughs> someone's skincare routine, like you can't go up. You can't say that someone looks older. Bro, looks like you just routine, finished so. high school. At 18. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Oh, okay. wrong. But, Fifteen you know, SBF right? is interesting. I I I don't know. I got told to go all the way to fifty. Maybe maybe that's a little bit. Maybe hey. then again, and maybe Australian yeah. sun's just crazy. You know, sun is uh, is kind of wild down here. Yeah, I would say um, it's pretty crazy. Down so with, 50 uh, was the, the recommended same with like, la you know? to be fair the la yeah. weather is still hot by the way it's fucking uh, and it's still warm yeah. 7th of december still warm give me the cold front please i i'm just i'm just sick and tired of this heat already price i was legit sweating fucking my yeah it was please. unbelievable like t-shirt and sweating um, move to finland. yeah must move to finland. well if you want to be in finland Jaws. Maybe not physically, but virtually. You can be with really? Express VPN. Have you been naughty or nice this year? Well, you might fool Santa, but you definitely can't fool your internet provider. They've seen all your late night naughty searches this year, and this is an Overwatch podcast. I know what's going on, all right? But you know what? Your business is all yours. That's why this holiday season, you should gift yourself the gift of privacy with Express VPN. Private mode doesn't keep your activity private. Your internet provider like AT&T, Verizon, can see all the website you've clicked on. They've likely already sold it to the advertisers. So if you've been, you know, I don't know, looking up skincare routines, like the internet providers, they know that, okay? So they get your information. And you know who else can see everything? Whoever owns the Wi-Fi that you've been using, like your boss, your school, and even your parents. They have access to all that information. But if you use ExpressVPN, like we do here at Patch Up, all of our traffic gets rerouted through an encrypted server. So all our browsing activity stays between us and us alone. ExpressVPN, it works on all devices. So whether I'm on my phone, tablet, laptop, whatever, I'm always protected. Best of all, ExpressVPN is super easy to use. All I do is tap one button to turn it on and I'm protected. So take yourself off the naughty list with the number one rated VPN. Visit. And this is where you need to pay attention, guys. ExpressVPN.com slash Overwatch. Okay? You need to get the Overwatch in there. ExpressVPN.com slash Overwatch. And get three months for free. For free. So there you go. That is Express a, VPN. a lot of months. Yeah. You know, I, I appreciate great. that we represent all of Overwatch. It wasn't even slash Black Chat. It's just slash Overwatch. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> this, this is because all we of are Overwatch. On we, are Overwatch. Podcast. we are Overwatch. We are Overwatch. Overwatch. And you know, this the timing of the sponsorship comes in a great time because last week Jack was really horny. So, you know, this is a great timing for this sponsorship, honestly. Yeah, I, well, that's true. I would say that's every uh, every single week, but with all of us, not just me, just saying. Best best UK VPN 2023. Here we go. Here we go. I, I'm traveling look. home soon, so I can actually uh, watch my US shows. Okay. Yeah, I can, watch, I can watch Swedish TV while here. I don't know if that's technically, I don't know, but... The VPN works great for that. So go to expressvpn.com slash overwatch and help us out. Get yourself some ExpressVPN. Help yourself out and protect your data. Protect all your search history and all that stuff, right? So go to expressvpn.com slash overwatch. That's where you need to go. Get to that link and uh, get yourself some extra free months of ExpressVPN. So here we go. Thank you for supporting right. the show, ExpressVPN. Love to see you. All right. Now... I do want to talk a little bit about your Daisy Adventures here, Jaws. Can you, okay. give us, can you give us just like a quick update here? What's going on? I know Avast has been in there. I know that you woke up today and in our Discord server, you put some like ramblings, like you had some oh, yeah. or nightmares about like some oil rigs or something. No, no. I, I don't know what's going on. They're not dreams. They're not nightmares. They're reality. I said the wastes called to me. We have been on an adventure in Daisy. Like just ridiculous after the just psychic damage we received from pansy and high park when they were trying to role play and like trick us and then eventually revealed their true selves to us um after that i've i've needed some cleansing so i want to go back out into the wastes basically and uh, go to the submarine because connor started playing 
And so I'm like, where's my favorite place to go in Daisy that I don't get sniped randomly out of the trees out of nowhere by 8,000 hour Daisy veterans that are probably also YouTubers, but it's a YouTube video. Wastes. I want to go to the sub. It's, it's, it's really fun. I don't know. The game is just sick, man. And co watching Connor fumble around, honestly, is the funniest shit. Uh, no, man. Like <laughs> him just trying to stay alive and then like not comming, by the way, which is the most important thing. Although when we comm, it's terrible anyway, and it doesn't make any sense. We end up shooting each other. Dude just goes mute. And we, he just can't listen to us either. So he's just like doing his own thing. And it's just like, you're going to die. You're going to die. But luckily he's very good at role play. So like he's, he's able to befriend people uh, quite easily. Yeah, he's got the gift of the gab. So good for the moment. For the moment. Until he meets those veterans of Daisy. Oh, I, I, and we got 1v5 yesterday. I honestly wish I could roleplay better. Like, especially with the, the new G uh, GTA 6 trailer around the corner as well. Oh, yeah. Like, there was that time on Twitch, or it probably still is, when, like, GTA roleplay was, like, massive. Yeah, no, no was, pixel, right? Still pretty big. No pixel? Still pretty big. Yeah. Some, some. yeah. I, I, I need to polish up my roleplay going. So, I don't know. This is fun, man. Yeah. Super fun. It's good. Yeah, it's a... uh, apart from when you get 1v5 by an absolute fucking beast. Jason Bourne, motherfucker, killing <laughs> all of us. Scott, okay, I'm going to call Scott out here. He's not here on the podcast, but I'm going to call him out. Because that guy, just, I am very, no I'm very noided. I'm very paranoid in Daisy, And like, the, the bushes are moving, the wind is moving, or things are rattling around. Is it someone sneaking up on us? Dude, we're in this new, like, area that we've never been to before in this, like, complex south of, like, the Starter Island. And we're in this compound, and there's, like, ladders and stuff and scott's like oh, i'm gonna go up this ladder go to the top of the building see if we can find weapons or whatever starts climbing josh is like don't do that don't go up there boom instantly headshot by this guy we don't know where he is we all panic we all rush to our buildings and we're all panicking and then the guy proceeds to 1v5 all of us yeah that's what Wait, happened this was some random guy who just dominated yeah he killed all of us yeah he killed all of us it was insane we had zero coordination hey, we had no suck. guns oh is this uh yeah so he i don't know this is a random vod I don't know if, where we are. Random. To be honest, we just gotta watch there's Scott like four walk around. Pixels, um, and I, I can't really tell. Oh, oh no, he's see. in um, in uh, the main city. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure. Watch him explore. He's got a megaphone. That's what's in his inventory. He's got a megaphone. <laughs> what is this? I, was this yesterday? Maybe this. Oh, I'm talking. No, this was like a few days ago, I think. Oh, a few days ago. Oh, this might be of the other time when I got sick. Yeah. This is before also, Scott realized that starting his stream with DayZ tanks his viewership, so now he has to start playing Overwatch for a few hours and then can't get Yeah, I, that, that's just streaming life, sadly. That any, is streaming any, life. Any, like, you play a game for a living, and uh, then you switch to another game, you get like two views. Yeah. Hey, you got 450 subs. Oh, that's pretty good, Scott. Keep pretty it good. Up. Yeah, support a stream is on right now as well for Overwatch. Uh, yeah. To put, uh, two subs, and you get the Echo skin. The Paradise Echo, Birds of Paradise? I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. But yeah, Daisy Adventures have been hilarious. I've uh, I've saved all the VODs because I'm a very sentimental person. I wanted to, you know, I'm 80. I want to look back at the VODs of us. But yeah, it's been good. But like, looking at the VOD length, I'm like, oh my God, there's so much Daisy, man. It's crazy. Like six hours a day recently. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, I, I, I went through all my PC. That's when I moved the, my production folder and stuff. And like, I've saved so many like clips and highlights from like years ago. So at one point, I'll do a stream. I'll just go through. You should. Um, while we're on the topic of Twitch, you want to get into the, the Twitch Korea stuff? Yeah, oh, we do it straight away. Do yeah, we can oh, do it yeah, straight away. Yeah. Big... I mean not the it's not the main topic but it came up recently and it's uh, it could actually impact some things on uh on our side in terms of of what esports because uh, a big part of what esports does happen in korea so um i guess we'll go over what is going on with twitch in korea and then talk about some of the impact but essentially i don't know if we want to read the whole article but twitch is shutting down in korea they're going to be shutting oh. down next year 2024 was it February 27th? This is like a two and a half months. Yeah. Um, and the reason they're shutting down, essentially, to paraphrase, is because of rising costs of infrastructure to keep Twitch running in Korea. And that might be surprising for some people. But the reason for that is because there have been a lot of legal changes in Korea, which I believe there's a, there's a lot of extra costs for foreign platforms, especially for live streaming. Who have their platforms 
be in Korea, so all the internet traffic, which ends up having to pay extra for that. Twitch tried to subsidize the costs by doing a multiple different things, such as using the maximum quality of Twitch streams from Korea to 720 instead of anything above that. So you can't stream in 1080. Um, you can't store any VODs or make any clips in Korea either to make sure that they're not storing any extra viewable stuff, viewable content on you know, on the Twitch Korea side. So they, they've been trying to reduce the costs a lot, but the costs are apparently so unbelievable to run Twitch in Korea that like running Twitch in Korea is just a gigantic loss for Twitch. They got to pull out. That. No choice but to pull out. 10x the cost. 10x yeah. more expensive. So yeah. Obviously, take that figure with maybe a little bit of grain of salt, but um, yeah, w which is insane. Um, I th Monty had a pretty decent tweet about it and like kind of summed up what the reason for that was. And it, from what I've been told, and I've had discussion with people in the past about this kind of thing, and it's just, well, they want to have like local companies or like, you know, Korean companies well, to the, um, the top, top yeah. for like streaming okay. and stuff. So that's, oh, that's like right. a freaker and oh, okay. everything else. Uh, yeah, so just... We'll, we'll go to the, um, the, the actual... Because that's a response to Emily. But the... So the uh, Monty had a really good contextual take on this. And so essentially, I'll... I'll, gi I'll give you the it, actual... Oh, you got the original comment? This thing? Oh. Yeah. So, do you think the, so Emily writes, do you think the Korean government will come to their senses and lower costs? Or is this a strategic move to keep content creators on homegrown platforms? And Monty responds, no, because the telecom companies want to charge streaming service a ton of money for bandwidth use. I do think that the government also wants to keep Korean streaming on domestic companies in general. There's a large amount of protectionism in Korean business. The ISPs lobbied for this. ISPs petitioned to the Korean government for this change for the web traffic so that services and platforms like Twitch would have to pay a lot of money. Now, apparently, this doesn't apply to the domestic platforms like Afrika. So that's why, you know, a, a lot of the rhetoric is, is currently saying, well, what do the Korean Twitch streamers do? They'll have to move to either YouTube or Korean which uh, Korean Twitch alternatives or live streaming alternatives like Afrika. And interestingly enough as well, Monty, a couple of jokes about the fact that Naver, which is a huge, um, it's kind of like a Reddit sort it's, of It's kind of their Korea. Google and their yeah. Reddit and like uh, lots of but other things built in. That, and also like that food platform and stuff. is That's about to just launch a streaming service as well, a live streaming service. So the timing of this is very interesting because they're kind of, they're going to basically force Twitch to shut down as Naver's about to launch their own streaming service. Um, so, yeah, they really, really, really want their streamers to be on their own platforms. So it's a little bit of protectionism for their own domestic platforms, but also the ISPs in Korea, uh, for whatever reason, they, what they wanted. Which is uh, an interesting company, but for, for one of the few times, this is not their L. Which is unfortunately just popping the collateral fire from this one, I think. Yeah, and if I'm right, there were rumors about other companies also maybe pulling out of um, Korea because of similar issues because it's so expensive to run it. Uh, but YouTube might have to as well, eventually. Yeah. Um, like all, I, all the streamers that want to move to YouTube, I don't know if that's safe either. If you're a Korean street, like Twitch streamer, you might just have to go to Afrika right now. Don't even bother YouTube. Probably going to be gone next. Yeah. I don't know. Hard to say, right? And. Um, the other thing was, I had, some, uh, I had a person in my Discord as well replying, just like, well, you know, Twitch has always been, uh, you know, hemorrhaging money since Amazon acquired yeah. Twitch. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe this is a clue. Maybe this is a small clue right here that Twitch is making a massive decision to pull out of Korea because of costs. Maybe, maybe that's just like a, like, like a little clue for what's ahead for Twitch if they don't decide or like if they can't fix some of these revenue problems, right? Like, it, it might come to the point where they have to make very drastic decisions on the Twitch platform to make it sustainable. And that could mean, you know, groundbreaking changes to, you know, how subscriptions work, how streaming works. Because right now, if I'm correct, you can just, like, open an account and just put in your stream key and you can start streaming, right? And obviously, I don't think you have the access to, like, the highest 
the highest bit rate possible. No, you the don't. Highest... No, no, you don't. You don't. Um, no, you don't, because I'm not partner and I can't get the highest bit rate. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's brutal. But, it's, but it's, it's one of the loser. There, there <laughs> might come a point where, like, Twitch is charging streamers for the right to broadcast in, like, high quality. Um, and I believe this is already the case on like some other streaming platforms that aren't as big as Twitch and YouTube already, where it's actually like pay to, you know, like you pay a subscription fee for the right to broadcast, right? So, you know, this could be a small step in, in, in pretty big overarching changes for Twitch to try to make the other That will kill business. the website. That will instantly kill the website. That will yeah, be I mean, already dying. So it will stop new streamers I mean, from wait, what? coming no, in. No, it's not already, already dying. The problem is, is that Twitch is exploding in popularity. Like, look at the numbers of, like, visitors and, like, unique viewers that are going to streams over the last, like, few years, especially around COVID. The problem is that it's fucking exploding. The issue is, because it takes so much money and bandwidth, actually stream to people, like, streaming to, like, five people... 1080p content like without any buffers or delays or anything like that is expensive like live streaming inherently is expensive or like viewing live stream content like twitch is not dying as a platform it's getting more popular which means it's getting more expensive to run because you're streaming to more people on the website yeah. um and like people are down you because basically you're just downloading right like you're just constantly downloading information when you watch a stream and well, the more people that stream on the platform, the like the bigger the bandwidth you going to be, which is more costly for them. And they've already they've already kind of set a precedent in like how they do monetization with subs and whatnot as well. If they end up touching subs again and like reducing the split further, it's gonna it's gonna create a lot more friction between the streamers once again with like how they actually monetize their streams and stuff because 50 50 is an insane number and it's always been okay. insane 70 30 is where it should be minimum but they can't afford to do that because it's too expensive for them. well they got to target where where they're actually losing money where they're losing money is all the streamers that are streaming to like sub 50 sub 10 yes. viewers let me look counts. up the numbers for that and there's yes. and there's a shitload of those that's 90 percent of streamers maybe even more like probably more than 90 percent of streamers are streaming to like less than 10 people yes and those are the streams that are actually costing you i think you're wrong money. with that number uh, avril i think it's, it's probably higher than that it's like 99.9 percent of you 99.99 percent of viewers or like streaming to sorry, like nobody uh, are streaming to nobody yeah, and because that, Twitch, that is what's costing Twitch a bunch of money. Twitch, yeah. yeah, exactly. Twitch inherently is a top-heavy system. You click on the Overwatch category, who's going to be at the top? Emong, J3, Bats, you know, whoever, right? You just chatting, so, or like so, what a Warcraft, like Asmongol, or like Asmon, know, Asmon's a funny one. He's costing them a lot of money too because he's yeah, streaming he, on his unpartnered account, account Zach Raw, which has no sub. And you can't button. sub to him. You cannot you sub to yeah, him, and he, he does like, that on purpose. It's it, that is really I, Twitch money as well. I thought about That's that the other Twitch day money. too. It's so funny. Like he he is hemorrhaging the company money because he's he live is, he's, he's live right now up. on a he's fucking Twitch so hard. Oh, he's only got five views right now. He just started ten minutes ago. But when he was doing season of discovery, like the first day of season of discovery, when he was trying to get in, there was like eighty k people watching his stream, and he is streaming with no sub button. And like, yep. he's not running ads or anything like that. That no. guy single handedly is hemorrhaging Twitch money. Well, like he gives a shit. Okay, he's and he not hemorrhaging as much as the ninety nine percent of people that are just streaming no, like nobody. He, but... He's not, but it's just kind of funny. And like, yeah, you know, really what, funny. It doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't bother him at all. Like, you know, he's got more than enough I, money I will at this say, point to, this, to survive. To, to reiterate, this whole situation is not that I don't. I think that Twitch doesn't make enough money. Even if Twitch was making a lot of money. I don't think they could justify the cost of Korea even then because you yeah. have to really look at each region as its own thing and be like, okay, we'll make money in the US, we'll make money in, you know, other parts of Asia probably, we'll make money in Europe, whatever. But then you look at Korea specifically because of their government and their laws and it is just draining your money every time a Korean person streams way more than if anyone else in the other parts of the world streams. That is very career specific problem so i don't really again i don't blame twitch for any of that i don't think it's really their issue and even if they had money i think they'd probably look to pull out of korea just because it's <laughs> it's just not worth it for them to lose that much money to provide service to korea where it's so inhospitable because of the isps 
what the ISPs right. are doing. It's got to be All like right. China, where like there's no Twitch, no YouTube in China, and China just has their own streaming services. It is what it is. Yeah. I don't know. What I, about the I, uh, I, esports though? Sorry. The esports side, I guess. I don't, I, I don't know if you were going to comment on something else, but yeah. Esports side of uh, no. which in Korea is going to be interesting. I was going to crack this can of Spindrift right here, but then it died down. Okay. And so I was like, do I have to host and like post a question right here? But I'm just going to crack it. No, like I can keep, I can keep talking about this till the cows come home. Like, I, I just think Twitch is a very interesting platform in how it operates because it, it was always going to be losing money because of the with you, basically. And then even with Amazon taking over, because Amazon at one point, they're probably going to want to be like, hey, we want to profit or at least break even. But then Amazon also kind of bought Twitch to use their back end, their propriety software that helps. And like they now use that in AWS. It was, it was like an acquisition of a company not to like, oh, we want to own Twitch. It's like, oh, no, we kind of want to just own like how you stream the platform that you build. We want to use that platform then spin up somewhere else and like, um and their content delivery services software um yeah i think dude with twitch pulling out of korea too that was like overwatch korea like that was showing flash ops like that's gone now it, well, in well it will be i guess it will be yeah it's like here. all these other all these other channels and streams and stuff and i've seen clips from various like korean streamers and like even pelican tweeted out like oh like what i don't have a job like i well not that he doesn't have a job like he's, he's probably going to still play as a pro player but like him streaming is probably going to come to an end at least on twitch and a lot of the, like the english audience that they're, they're, it's probably more korean viewers on like pelicans channel for example than there are english but there, there are definitely some english viewers there as well like he's going to lose a significant portion and well, i did see this other korean streamer like a clip where uh, she was talking about like the whole situation and she streams mostly to an english audience and they're probably not going to follow them to africa or like no, wherever they end up going right because that's not a western brand and it's not somewhere where you can oh i'm watching my favorite streamer now they finished playing or like doing whatever and they're streaming i'm not going to then find other content on the website because 99.99 percent of yeah I, I i have a question is it just like the local Korea server that goes away? Like, can you be in Korea and still stream like servers in other Asian countries? So you'll obviously get super bad latency, but it'll be like, you could be on Twitch and podcast use. I don't. Because I'm like, if you're an esports broadcast, like how does that affect? It because could, it could. Maybe the ISP, like maybe the ISP just blocks Twitch entirely. And That'd that could be, be insane. Thing. I mean, that is like, like <laughs> China levels I, of just like, I, well, I guess they already have that with porn in South Korea. What's to prevent them from doing that too with them? Same category. Yeah, it was the hot tub streams, guys. They just, they yeah. cracked them down. <laughs> the hot tub streams. Is, they just ruined, uh, it ruined Twitch, Twitch ruined in Korea. Ruined for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I don't know, like, because I'm wondering the same thing, you know, like, could you go to Korea and just broadcast from like, I don't know. I don't know what a close. I don't know what the closest server is outside of Korea, like, but um, Japan maybe. Yeah, Japan I, I servers I maybe won. or like other servers in Asia, I suppose. Yeah, I, I don't even know. But yeah, I mean, they're probably. I, I will they block it in ISP level? Probably not. Well, the, but the, the ability... ISPs that are putting the the sanctions on. I don't know if I want to call yeah. them. Yeah, but it it's would the be ISPs that are leading the charge in this whole thing, right? Because but of the ISPs. What what they'll if I had to guess, what they would do in that case is like limit the bandwidth so much to Twitch that it's like for the average user, it's practically impossible to like load the page. You know what I mean? Like you're saying, like, well, maybe like, I don't, maybe you could VPN or some shit. I don't know. Like yeah, yeah. expressvpn.com like, slash Overwatch. Maybe? Yeah, yeah I mean, see that's how yeah, slash maybe, again yeah. we are, we're trying to save. Overwatch, all of Overwatch. So true. Via Express VPN slash Overwatch, clean Korean Overwatch. So, you know, Ima we have imagine, to... imagine if we went to the the Sudi's apartment, like yo, press v Guess what? Slash We've Overwatch. got a solution. Yeah. Keep doing Path to Pro. And <laughs> Can't believe we got all of Overwatch. We got the whole all of Overwatch. Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, so. Good. 
We will keep we, no one no one, one say anything, okay? Don't spread it out there. <laughs> Don't put it out there because because we need to we need to retain the link, okay? We need we need to retain the Overwatch link. <laughs> No, I thought you wanted to be out there because you want you want people to use the link, so you got to put it out there. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's a temporary thing. We're just like spread as possible. It's just then really yeah. funny. <laughs> it is. It's so good. <laughs> it's not Plat Chat. It's Overwatch. That's the slash. We got all of Overwatch. All of Overwatch. All right. Where where do we want to jump to oh, next? Aaron. Yeah. I mean, it, it obviously Mayhem. obviously sucks, but it, it's one of those things where like. It's one of those things where just like, you know, it's not Twitch's fault that like operating costs are that high. Okay, last thing actually. One last thing yeah. about this. What what do you guys think happens to Korean Overwatch next year? Can I'm they broadcast fuck, broadcast dude. on Twitch? Probably Bruh. not. What I happens? Mean. Do they have to do YouTube again? Like what's the what's the plan? Like what dude. do they do? This is a big deal. Because Korean Overwatch might be the region that carries Overwatch esports next I year. I mean it'll probably just go to a different platform. It'll probably go to like yeah, yeah. A, 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 because so the we're gonna Korean have to do the YouTube thing again. No, but like the Korean audience. Okay, will yeah, be they'll fine go. Yeah, the Korean to, audience uh, will go to Africa, probably. What about the English audience? YouTube? Like, are we just going to do YouTube again? Like, what? Yeah, I mean, it depends, right? Because. Oh, bro, okay, so. Kick. We're doing kick, aren't we? Here we go. Okay, so fellas. say it's like. Say it is Twitch that Kick.com Korean. Well, are you talking Overwatch. about like an English broadcast of the yeah. Korean Overwatch? Okay, yeah, so yeah. like. It'll probably just. You won't stream it in Twitch. Uh, sorry, in Korea. You would send a feed to oh. like so if you're casting it right so it would just be you're just sending a feed you're not like broadcasting it on twitch from korea but you'd normally so do you, that so right let me get this right you're saying korea would send the live feed to somewhere not korea and then they would broadcast it on twitch i mean i don't know that that's the only like other reps may say it's a production company in Australia. Say ESL Australia, right? Does Overwatch, Korean Overwatch, like whatever. They would they would just be sending a feed to ESL Australia, and then ESL Australia or like whoever the fuck it is would say would I'm then sorry. broadcast it to Twitch or like to where whatever platform they're on, right? That they can just. That would make they the most just, sense to me. They can just but... send it to Solomon and then he can just press go yes, live. Yes, he's going to send works. it to Solomon, exactly. And then, he, and then, and then, he then just... we have it on twitch.tv slash plat chat. <laughs> right. There you go, that's your news. Plachat.com slash overwatch. Yeah. I'm lost in the sauce. I don't know how any of that. I know there's clean feeds, but I don't know how the fuck they're really just talking about some illegal shit right now and I'm here for it. I mean... I don't no, know how it's going to work, but that's like <laughs> really, I don't know the how only way... I don't know how it gets really yeah, that's the only way I could see that working. I mean, that's I not yeah. uncommon to do that either, right? Like, that, I think that's pretty yeah, You can give normal. a clean feed over and... and yeah, because yeah. it's, it's just a clean feed you're broadcasting, right? And that, that's pretty normal, because, like, if there's an event... Sometimes this happens with, like, the Overwatch League, for example. If there's a production company that's not American, and they end up doing Overwatch well, League I mean, or, like, Overwatch Contenders or whatever, before... like, they... They just send the feed to the other country and then the ingest. Well, season fucking... four and five. Season four and five, Billy Billy produced the Apex side and they sent a feed to US production who then broadcast yeah. it on Yeah. But that's... Billy Billy themselves never broadcast on Twitch because obviously Twitch is not in China. So Yeah, so that I makes guess, I guess maybe that sense yeah, hey, maybe esports is saved, fellas. You just gotta do a little bit of funky business down the side and you've saved Overwatch Esports done. I mean that's not even like illegal. It's just like, hey, we're just sending a clean feed to somewhere else. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's the way I think it might ha. work. But I could take I could that work. Korean ISPs. <laughs> Talking about saving esports. Let's jump over to Florida Mayhem. Albert Ye cooking in the lab, getting some championship rank for, for uh, they the look entire Florida Mayhem team. Thick, dude. They look insane. They, I, I wanna... love how they have the countries as well that people are from. In the, in their own language too, um, around the, around the ring. Yeah. So it, uh, you know, it obviously has name here, but it'll say your tag or whatever, country, um, all the countries. I would love um, it if someone's ring just said name. The, the, someone, the someone. One. Name. I mean, there probably will be just one that says name Daniel. on it. It'll be a test one, wouldn't it? I so. want to bring attention to the bottom right of the screen, not where it says Baron, but to the left of that, where it says all the players' names, and I'll make sure that everyone understands. Who are you is getting his second ring, baby. Let's go, Let's. who are you? Oh most go to oh, bench player of all time. Second ring. Unbelievable. Actually, first ring, because I don't think Shanghai did a ring, and I actually found out, interestingly enough, that not all teams did rings. I think only Shock 
They did rings twice, and then Mayhem are doing rings. And did Lon I don't think London did rings. Um, Shanghai did not do rings, and I don't think Dallas did rings. Did Shock actually do rings? I didn't know that. Yeah, Shock did two rings. Yeah, oh, wow. they went twice. That's awesome. Uh, they had the ring ceremonies and everything on their YouTube. Never yeah, I'm actually mad jealous. I actually recently I, I went on a bit of a crusade. And I tried to dig up where my old or my our old rogue trophies went that like we won in like 2016 and stuff, but they might just be lost. They might just be lost. Like, yeah, probably basically. in someone's cupboard somewhere. Like who are, who well, owns rogue no, right now? All right. Well, first of all, one of the trophies uh, went to like our old manager. He like took the, the best one that we won in China or whatever. And I'm like trying to find oh, yeah. him. I'm like, yeah, we, we won APAC Premier. We beat throughout the Kai in the finals, bro. Oh, yeah. There was a That's sick right. trophy. Nate Nancer was there on stage. We got flowers. We got a big check. We got a trophy. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know where these trophies went. And then Rogue got acquired by some streamer. And like, so the Rogue brand doesn't exist anymore. And so I reached out to the Rogue guys. And I'm like, hey, like, do, do you guys have our old trophies? Like, whatever happened to those? Because like, you know, if they're just like in a, you know, they're just rusting somewhere. Like, I, I want to get my hand on these trophies. You know, they're in incredible memories to me. Like, I'm super proud of what we accomplished them. But they might just be a loss of time. So I might never get my hands on those again. But I'm trying to dig that up. I'm super jealous of these rings. These rings look absolutely amazing. And I mean, it, it's, it, it's actual, like, commitment from the Florida Mayhem work to, like, you know, make this custom design and, you know, make sure everyone gets one. So I think it's amazing from Albert and the entire Florida Mayhem staff to, like, make this happen. Like, th they are... They, they look incredible. Like, everything. I mean, they look like a proper NBA championship ring. But it's for Florida Mayhem, so... I love it. You want to do a comparison? I, uh, I posted the shock video. We don't have to... I don't want to rain on Mayhem's parade just because you've never seen it. A surprise you, you Oh, we're doing, uh, doing a, ring, a ring power ranking here? There's only three rings to look at, and two of them are from Shock, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> you can make a power ranking of... Or power, but ranking of three... And, and the other thing you have to remember is the teams themselves are paying for this. So this is, you know, this is the uh, mayhem bowing out. And as, as the last thing they do for the year, they I don't know how expensive the rings are, but there's a lot of people on that they team don't look the staff cheap. are getting them as well. They don't, they look, they don't cheap. look cheap. That's the thing. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm not a jewelry guy, so I wouldn't know. Maybe Mitch does. Okay, but um, each, each ring is maybe, maybe costing a pretty bit. This, Vars should have been here to tell us how much these damn rings cost. Is Avast yeah. getting a ring? We could probably... No, could probably... I... Dude, Avast... No, come on. There's no way. There's no oh, way, buddy. pretty large. I mean, this is Damn. like... Um, oh, there's less diamonds on that one. Like NFL uh, rings down. or something? I don't know. From Tom Brady GIF the other day when he had like all his rings on his finger or something. Overwatch That's Champions. Right? SF. Yeah. I mean, looks good. You know, great for its time, but the Florida main one... <laughs> <laughs> number one in my 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 championship ring power ranking so i mean it does say break top at the bottom which gives it a, a, an extra an extra point wait it does it says break top at the very bottom of the ring yeah okay, oh if you go into the image in the God. bottom right it shows the bottom of the ring it says hashtag break up oh my I got the, God. um oh, second here? ring as well does. you want to do the oh actual my. full power ranks that that's that i believe that was the first ring maybe i'm wrong but there's a there's this there's, there's another already posted some pictures of, of the, the other shock ring and it's got the two stars in it and two trophies, in it, which I thought was pretty fucking sick. So the second shock ring is actually insane. Oh, wow. This looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, this is actually, it actually looks like it's a similar, it's not the same like manufacturer. Things. It looks very similar. If you, go, if you go around, see the two trophies, back to back two trophies. Yeah. I love that. That's really cool. Yeah, and they got some, something under here as well. You got the record. Oh, name on it. Is that the map record, maybe? Yeah, it looks like the map record. Says Anster. Yeah, I mean that's that's awesome. That's that's super cool. I didn't even know know this happened. Yeah. So got only only Mayhem and Aunt. um and Shock did the rings. No one else did the rings. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Go. Let's go. go. Rings are cool. I, I think it's a nice little addition, right? And hey, last ring potentially ever made by a big team. Say allegedly. Well, I feel like last. I'm saying that all the oh time. Oh my god, on that. dude. I, I, I had like a moment. I had like a moment this past week where uh, I, I googled I googled Overwatch League 
and I went to the the Overwatch League Wikipedia page, and just the word the end date, the Overwatch League was a professional esports league. I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. no, oh. Wikipedia, bro, oh. Wikipedia, why? Oh, is it born was. and is deceased on there? It, it's not the Overwatch League is. It's Overwatch League was a professional esports league. Oh, it just it just stabbed me. Hey, in the heart. don't Seized. worry, baby. Full screen. Oh. Can you full screen Avril? Can you full screen Avril? Full screen Avril? Can, can you do that? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, guys. Don't worry, baby. Get out of the way. There it is. Let's go. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if um I don't know if anybody's seen it. I've shown it on screen a couple of times, but we got this card thing at the very end and it said like, hey, you're gonna get all this stuff. Which to be fair, I will say it is really cool. Like having and it, a, a small caveat. Get the card I this. I'll get the card. Yeah, get the card. Um, I I petitioned this to Marissa, who is um like the team for Overwatch League like intermediary um back in like 2018 2019 i was like hey it would be really cool if like you were part of the league and you got something special in the game like an icon or like a spray or something like that so like they're actually doing it which is really cool you get we're getting like little sprays which is the participation free shit award be honest, the reason you I mean, petition you just want a free shit i want a free shit is kind of cool but yeah there you go so you, we get some icons and Right, so all that stuff's Ooh. already in the game. You can obviously see it already, and a lot of people have kind of commented on it. But it, but it's a yeah. nice little gesture, I think, from uh, like the dev team and stuff to give people that participated in the last year. Now, and I, I will say, a lot of people are like, "Are we going to get it if we played the league a few years ago?" And the card did say that only for like this year. So I'm not sure if people from other years are going to get it. I don't know. But, I will yeah, say it, it's quite nice. I, I I really like it. We get an icon, some sprays, and some points and. Overwatch League skins, Nintendo skins and stuff. And yeah, it's it's a nice gesture. I want to draw attention to what we get at the bottom right down here. Uh, Overwatch League tokens. For you guys. 2,000 yeah. League tokens. Now, what's interesting about that <gasps> is... What are we going to do with those? <laughs> I mean, the, the, okay. You know, they're they're spree before they go away. Dude what, is Duba, what do bro? we do like, with 2,000 League tokens? They're still in the store. <laughs> you can still buy them. What are you saying? Like, I don't know when we're... <laughs> obviously, that's going to unlock, but... I'm I'm also curious, what's going to happen to the Overwatch League store? Is it going to turn into an Overwatch esports store? Like, is that a plan for later down the line? Are league points still going to exist, or like the points still going to exist? Watch esports points, and they're going to be used for different events or like something else. You know what I mean? Because I think that was one of the coolest things that um, Overwatch, like Team Four, and like they integrated with the esports and Overwatch League was they did like event skins. Like we we have like MMA for example, right? We had all these really very unique skins you got from just spending your Overwatch, Overwatch, right? Um, I'm curious if that's going to carry on the years coming. So yeah, I don't know. I, I hope it does because I think it's a really cool and unique way of giving. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. What's that, yeah, good, talk. good talk. Good talk, boys. Maybe convert it to like legacy tokens or something. I don't, I don't oh, know. dude. Uh, yeah, Do you think just... we'll get more stuff? I mean, we'll I probably get well, more. Well, I don't stuff, know. Yeah. I hope so. I, I think, like I said, I think it was a really cool feature that Team Four did was integrate very unique, cool-looking skins into the yeah. game, and I really enjoyed. Point. Like my one of my favorite periods of that was when they did the colorways as well back in uh, twenty. Um. With Luchador Reaper, and he got the Glads and the Soul one. There was the Mercy one that was the Glads and the Rain one. Like, yeah, I, I thought, was it Glads and Rain? I can't remember. But it, it was purple, and then she was... I can't remember the Mercy one. But I remember the Reaper one. It was the Soul Dynasty and the Glads one, because he had the giant belt. And it had the, the logos of the teams on. Yeah, I thought that was really sick. And yeah, I do hope they continue doing stuff like that. And I think... Maybe obviously, maybe with the maybe not with the teams because the teams aren't licensed. If a team wins an event, say it's like timeless thing like that, they're probably not gonna do a timeless skin within the game. It would probably be a more generic one. But yeah, I'm um, I really hope they continue that stuff because I think it's a really cool way of like putting East tuning in and shit like that. Yeah, I, I'm a little doubtful, but just because I think there's not gonna be, I feel like there's not gonna be as much dev involvement in the esports side for next year maybe like much further down the line but there's no what's the dev buy-in if it's gonna be more open circuit kind of style if it's not in-house if it's not 
you know, Blizzard's actual product anymore. I just feel like the dev involvement is going to be pretty minimal. Maybe yeah, I'm I mean, it depends. But like it's, I think it, the realistic it, position is that they're probably going to have a limit. Yeah. I mean, considering how hard the dev team like work on like new heroes and whatnot, like think about how much content is being released and even they showed us at BlizzCon, like new heroes and apps, like the live service model does really crunch devs hard. So like yeah. getting content out for like skins for the store, mythic skins for the battle pass, other things for the battle pass. Like mm. it's a lot of, of a, a big time and dev commitment to the game. So I kind of agree with you, Avril, and like, yeah, maybe there won't be enough time at all for the devs to actually make skins for the esports like maybe there maybe it is going to turn into a legacy currency and we never see kind of esports skins again but you know i'm I mean, kind of hopeful that we do see like that because i know like return of like investment in making the skins is like a thing you know like if you just like how much return do you get for like you know, giving out free like theirs but you know most of the contender stuff are usually like recolors and stuff with the white and green they look really sick and like how much yeah. time is that like, but you say that I would say there's still because Blizzard like to put a lot of polish onto their products. Like even those more basic stuff would take them a lot longer than you maybe anticipate. Um, just like knowing how the not knowing how the dev cycle works, of course, but like in general, just from uh, like historically, those things take a little bit of time to kind of work into the game. Um, but like, and how many recolors can you do? You know what I mean? Like, you, sure. we, we can do Contenders in Overwatch League because they had color schemes. Um, what about uh, Flash Ops is a good example. Are we going to do Flash Ops skins? Or is it just going to be like Contenders skins, like what skin? Are they going to continue pumping out recolors? Probably not. I would say they'd probably stay away from that because not only does it kind of clog up well, what they have in the pipeline, but also you might as well put that dev hours if you're going to do something like that towards very unique well we are coming off the world cup that got you know the fundraiser package with the soda yeah. skin and all that and like and the i medallions. do think in the past six months Emblems. they have been very active in giving away free skins and free stuff sprays uh packs you know everything they have been very active in these we're seeing doing that stuff so yeah. will they do more of that in 2024 when there's no overwatch league i have no idea but there's no, there's like, you know, the, the, the previous evidence, the past six months of evidence is that they actively are very involved in giving away that stuff. So I don't think we can say for sure, but most recently, if you want to be optimistic, like glass half full, you can definitely, you know, be on the side of, well, recently they have done a lot of stuff for us. So maybe that'll continue. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Yeah, especially with like how unique the Sojourn skin was, you know, like that's really cool got the little charms as well where they're unlocked in the game i didn't realize until the other day obviously they put out a tweet like oh we raised five hundred thousand something dollars you know uh for the prize pool which is ridiculous a ridiculous amount of money um yeah so i think you are right like if they continue to do stuff like that or maybe it's just a once a year thing maybe they only do it for world cup like it's also fine i think hey okay. um but optimistically speaking i think yeah maybe they continue to do i hope they do yeah yeah they are very cool they're some of the most unique skins in the game you can't look at those esports skins and go oh they're kind of bad like no they're a lot most of them are like really sick like the widow yeah. skin um the esports widow skin i dude it's i think it's a french name i have no idea but like i can't pronounce it and that looks freaking awesome like the arna skin too heroeris or whatever it's called i remember reading the sheet on like how to say that word because i did a video for it um that's a really sick skin so yeah i mean they're very unique and yeah, please. Doing them. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be optimistic. I I I think they'll they'll. Um, anyway, moving moving on here. Do you um yeah, we should shout this out. I I know we got some Malga stuff and some um you know see, new season stuff to talk about, but just gonna just gonna do this first. This okay, live service okay. game, 2023. Oh, I did see Yay, a tweet about this, Johnny. Yeah, we, we won. Number we five, won. Valorant. Valorante, number four, Apex, Apex Legends. Number three, Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Go. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go this year. Number two, Fortnite. Fork number one, Knight. Overwatch 2. We're the best. Overwatch 2, as it always. Oh, you see that TV? 
Three hundred bucks for dude, a hundred dollars for a mug. Okay, Yo. do not click on that ad. Uh, no, uh, I I had one of those ember mugs. It's like a mug that like uh, heats itself. So if you make tea, for example, like the Why mug am I not stays surprised? hot. No. Why am I not surprised you have a hundred dollar mug? Well, I a hundred dollars. I bought it in I bought it in twenty nineteen, uh, and then the mug was too small, so I sold it on Craigslist for like a twenty dollar loss. But um. Yeah, it also wasn't a hundred bucks then. I think it was a smaller version. It was probably like fifty bucks, but I sold it for like thirty bucks. Craigslist. How long are you leaving a drink there for that you need it heated up? You know what I mean? Like I drink my coffee in like fifteen minutes, kind of thing. Jeez. Well, nice. no, I in fifteen minutes that's pretty fast. But you know, if it, you know, if you have a large cup of cup of coffee and like within an hour, like it's pretty room temp, but like it's not pleasant to drink. So. I, I was very, I, I, I was seduced by the thought that like, oh, I can have hot coffee for like the next hour. But if you have coffee that's been hot for an hour, it's probably not good. So <laughs> yeah, that kind of, exactly. I just want to say, kinda, I just want to say, shit. George, thank you for the, the, the mug discussion sidetrack. But Overwatch 2. Oh yeah, my baby, my baby. I just, service game. Stunlocked by uh, the $100 mug. Or 2023. Yeah, which is. Appreciate that. And, and honestly. Insane, people, actually. It's been a year, right? Has it been a, I think it's been a full. It's been more than a full year, actually, of the official launch of Overwatch 2. Yeah. And um, a, a year down the line, I think, you know, okay, are, are we going to be a little bit biased towards Overwatch? Maybe. But at the same time, it's like, legitimately, the game has had a ton of content. If you actually, you, reading what it says in the article here as well, um, since last year's release, we've had Ramacha Lari, Life Weaver, Malga within the last four months. Um which is an insane and amount of if heroes. If you scroll down the number of maps as well, Holy. there's been more maps released this year than any other year of content release in Overwatch, aside from the actual release of the fresh game itself. So we've had Antarctic Peninsula, New Drug yep. City, Surabasa, Samoa. That's the most competitive maps ever added to Overwatch in a year since its release in 2016. And so. they're not free-for-all maps either, because do you remember the time in Overwatch 1 where they were releasing maps, but they were only free-for-all maps? Like FFA maps and like Mystery Hero maps. Was it Mystery Heroes? I don't know if they were using Mystery Heroes as well, but um, oh no, it would be FFA Mystery Heroes. But yeah, I was. Everybody was like, "Oh, new maps coming!" Oh, it's an FFA map. Like yeah, everybody yeah. was so sad when that came so out. Actual but, competitive maps. Yeah, actual competitive maps, which is really sick. And you list off all those heroes, but like Kiri and Soj as well came out on launch too. Like we've had an unbelievable amount of heroes, and oh, obviously. Queen. We're going to be biased. Uh, we're on the uh, Overwatch plat chat. You know what I mean? Uh, but I yeah. think it's I think it's kind of sick that we're on one of these lists. When was the last time we caught a W in I the media? I think uh, we got... Um, yeah. I think who IGN gave us a really high score. Oh, really? I think for a review. And I remember Let's people go, laughed. It was like, oh, Overwatch got like... A, it was like a 9 or 10 out of 10 or something like that. Go, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. And then before that, obviously, Game of Wars, I think we had Game of the Year. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll say it. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be obnoxious about this stuff, you know? It's just Deserto making some tier list or whatever. Some people might be like, you know, what does it matter? Don't care, you know? People have been shitting our game for years. I don't, I don't g give a <laughs> shit. So if there's going to be publications giving us awards and stuff, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be obnoxious. I'm going to retweet it. I'm going to, you know... And we'd be out Overwatch Fortnite. Service. We'd just, be, yeah, so just put out a Lego expansion. It's an actual expansion. joke that we're not nominated for Game of the Year show for uh, for Best Live Service Game. Actual joke. Wait, who is nominated? Does anybody know? I know Apex is nominated. and uh... to be Okay, I was going to say, to be fair, I, I, I really love Apex as well. It's one of my favorite games. But like Apex's live service model, I think, is really good. And the way they do the battle passes and the way they've done like maps and redoing the maps and the different modes that they release as well. I, I'm a really big fan of Apex. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised we kind of them as well because I think their model was so, also really I did check. IGN gave us a 10 out of 10 in 20. In 2020? So, oh, really? In 2020, okay. we got 10 out of 10. So, which is a, I don't think many, yeah, IGN don't normally, the joke is they give like a lot of eights and nines, but an actual 10 out of 10 is, I think, uh, quite a good achievement there. Nice. W actually, uh, um, uh, yeah. Who, who the game awards live service game awards? I can't even find the live service game now. Um, best ongoing. Yeah, this is this is probably it. Dude, they've got a URL on. I googled game it. Awards. URL best ongoing. And it just makes me. Outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. You got Apex Cyberpunk. I okay. Final Fantasy I Fortnite think and Genshin Impact. 
look, what's Cyberpunk's it, update it was really good, but model? I don't think it should have been on the list because it's not a live service game. However, maybe Game Awards are trying to be funny with this award because they're combining live service games with just non-live service games that have updates. No, And so dude, they've kind of just shoved Cyberpunk in I, there. Dude, Game Awards suck. Like straight up, like their nominations <laughs> suck. They 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 come out and they think they're like they're they're the go to award thing of like all games in the industry. Oh, best no, they they suck. Their nominations suck. Oh, I I don't even watch this show. Like I think it's actually just I don't know. I hate how people like put it on a pe pedestal. Is it because you didn't get invited? Like well, although invited although Awards. Johnny, I will say oh, nice. the one time the Game Awards didn't suck was in 2016 when they gave us the game of the year for Overwatch. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that year, is, they did not that suck. That is so true, but other actually. years, they did suck. So any year where they didn't give us awards, they did suck. Um, I don't know. I, no, I'm it's not about that. I just, I just, I just, every time, every year, like the show goes on, I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't think this represents the game industry. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not part I, of the game industry. I, I'm looking at this now. Yeah, Apex Legends, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin. So I think Cyberpunk is a... I kind of agree with Cyberpunk being a little bit funny here, but it's also like... It's not a live service. It's Yeah, I'm but sorry, this is not also like... a live service category. That's the this thing. This like, like evolves the player experience over time. And I think it's almost... I think I do think then it's a little playing, bit comical with Cyberpunk. Playing fast and loose with the category then. That's my Right, yeah, because it. it is kind of funny with Cyberpunk because the game released in such like a, a like a dog state. Although I did complete it twice in their like 1.1 patch or whatever. And I beat it like two more times on like the 2.0. So I've realized Cyberpunk is... Um, it is funny, but then you could argue DLC and like ongoing content. Cyberpunk's Phantom Liberty was really, really good, so I kind of understand why they put them there. It's not even yes. ongoing because they're, they're not developing anymore. Like that's it. They've announced they work right. on the new, the next Cyberpunk two, Cyberpunk yes, twenty seventy eight right. so, or some shit. So they're not I, even working on the game anymore. It's not even a live game. You know what I mean? They so are playing hella weird. fast and loose with the category. I do agree because all these other ones are like live service models or like yep, Final, Fan Final, Final Fantasy's case, it's a MMO. It's an MMO RPG, right? So like that makes sense. It's like World of Warcraft as well, right? Because it's ongoing right, content PUBG expansion. PUBG Mobile expansion, expansion. was was in this was in the best esports game. Maybe no. is it popular? Maybe it is popular. Hey, I don't know. But like they got on, Black guys. Pink PUBG in, in they got Black wonderful. Pink and PUBG Mobile W. Absolute W from a okay, well, PUBG Mobile. You know, I think it, I, I think it's got that, that 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 like painting game won like best esports game last year or some shit. You know Platoon? what I'm talking about? Platoon or whatever they won like best esports <laughs> painting game. Painting game. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Yeah, that, that, sick, that killed me. That just Probably like ruined about you all credibility for this entire award show. It's just like, oh, really? You're gonna award Splatoon? Like, come on now. Okay, great game. The thing is, like, it's the same as esports awards. It, Splatoon every is year, a fantastic it, every, game. Every year, it doesn't though? matter. It's completely fake. Except this year when Mitch won. This is the year it mattered, <laughs> and it's real. Fully 100% real and base. But every other year, completely oh fake award. God. And then next year, when none of us win again, another fake award. But if one of us does win, completely real and based. That is so true. I although Overwatch did get a nomination in the Game Awards, and it was Coach the Year for Gunba. So, oh, wow. do you think Gunba? it's going to win it? W. So probably oh, not. Gunba was nominated for esports awards, wasn't he? Um, you're talking about uh, esports awards, not Game Awards. No, right? Game Awards. This is Game Awards. Well, he was also nominated for esports awards. He lost it to um, Potter. To uh, Potter. Yeah, I mean Potter's also in the vote run. Uh, Runnings for Game Awards as well. Oh, I mean, Potter is just going to win twice. Probably, she should, win. Yeah. she should probably win. Yeah, yeah. like I the EG, the EG for Gunba, honestly. in Valorant run was just ridiculous. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't EG's be too mad a fake if, org, so oh. I don't really want to give EG any awards. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of sad with the, the. I mean, we're not patch out Valorant, but man, EG story in um over the last like just year generally, or so uh, not even to do with Valorant, just insane. generally that org. Uh, yeah, you know. that is true. That is true. I mean, but Gumba's up there, you know. So we do we do have some That's Overwatch right. representation. And you know what? Awards, Gumba's so. getting a ring good on him so true so yeah. true best right. esports team EG Fanatic uh, uh, Garmin the Gladiators that, the fact that EG shoot. on there means it's a fraud award the award is fraudulent <laughs> really? already they did EG have one of the most epic runs in like they did not runs oh, but Fan okay. Fanatic if you won ignore, two majors, if you ignore so. all the bullshit around the org I guess you could like just full tunnel vision on the fact that they won but yeah, like, I they're mean, not a good old guys. Come on. The the, the e evil genius is a name, I guess, for what they were able to accomplish, the players and the coach, right? Like how else? Yeah, like you know, they are part anyway. of the organization, so you have to reward their. But fanatic should probably win that. Fanatic Valorant, unbelievable. I don't know. I'm not. I think one of the EG or fanatic. I'll trust, I'll trust your expert commentator here, Joss, because I'm not into it. So. 
I mean, to be fair, I don't really follow League anymore as much. Well, as much as I used to. Don't follow Dota. Counter Strike, I don't really follow either. I mean, <laughs> those are the other nominated. Sky games only cares about Daisy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. If Daisy was on there, hey, W. So oh. the the best one v five um in the history of Daisy goes to the guy that killed me, Bren, Josh, Scott, and uh, Avast yesterday. Yeah, real best clutch in uh, gaming history. <laughs> that guy. All right. Do you guys want to jump into uh, talking about Season 8 of Overwatch? Oh. We're just one hour into the episode, Do so we can finally talk about uh, what's actually happened um, with, with, with Thumbnail we got going on. So, uh, I don't know if... I don't think this trailer was released by the time uh, we did an episode last No, we week. never watched this trailer on, um, yeah, we never no, on last week. We watched the animated short, but we didn't get to see the trailer. Yeah. Um, this is for the entire but, season, of course, so Mal gets in there. But the hunt... Yeah. Like the theme i i, I played the hunt it's I, i'm I, so the theme is fine the game mode is very lacking we can talk about that later i think the, the general boosts. general content of this i think one of the cooler things about the season as we will see in the trailer is the weapon skin so that's actually really I insane agree. that we're getting weapon skins the skin is in really overwatch so yeah so, uh, w monetization like actual good monetization that you really get i hope yeah i um i agree i think weapon skins were they needed to be added to the game i think people have been asking them for a long time uh i like 18 <laughs> um and actually having them come into the game and they have like unique sound effects as well i think it's fucking that window skin by the way like the theme of this battle pass i'm like I'm like kind of met on because I prefer like cyberpunky kind of thing. Widow skin kind of dominates, I'll say it. Um, even though I just bought Cyber Devil Widow because those skins from one or two are now available in the Hero Gallery. If you go in the Hero Gallery, you can buy them. And I finally have Cyber Demon Widow. Are they permanently in the gallery? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Uh, but I, I, you can buy them. And I bought the Widow one because I missed it. So um, I'm happy about that. But I really like the Widow skin. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, uh, I've watched like oh, Widow skins. skin will forever be the Yeah, best. right. So, so weapon skins, people wanted this for the longest time. Um, and we're actually finally getting them. They have unique sound effects and you can equip them with any skin. And I'm really hoping we now also get the ability to mix and match your models. Give me Arna's sniper skin, but without the sniper rifle uh, for the gun. Because that gun skin is not ugly, but it is humongous and covers up 90% of the screen. Give me, give me a mix and match. But this opens uh. up another line of like... You know, it sounds very corpo of me to say this, but like monetization, which is going to be important for the game moving forward. But it also is more customization, which is really cool. And like their ability to flex even more with not having to like tie a specific design to a specific skin on a character, I think is really cool. Um, yeah, we, we I'm, can't I'm do the super win, excited for this. We, we can't have like skins where the scope is a bit smaller. You can see more. That would be fun. Oh, Apex Legends. Like the skins. We can't be yeah. doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they probably won't. I, they, they, I can't imagine there would be many guns that would give you an advantage because, like, Apex is a lot, like, on iron sights. There's a couple of, like, R99 anyway. skins that have, like, better iron sights than, like, the default ones. But in Overwatch, I don't really see that being an issue unless, like I said, with the Arna skin, the sniper model, the, the, the gun skin is just, it's just bad to play with because it covers up more of your screen. Or, normally, they're, like, a detriment to anything, so... Uh, most of the default skins in Overwatch are like they're as good as they can be in terms of like taking up as much of the screen as or li as little of the screen as I, possible. So I think the weapon skins will probably be a way bigger draw than any like standard skin, except for maybe yeah, Mythics. And the reason yeah. for that is because just like in Valorant, it's a thing that you can see all the time. And if you put in really cool effects, sound effects, and animation effects, you make the skins awesome. Like. That is just a huge avenue for people to geek out on something that they can actually be proud of and see all the time. And um, and again, not to be too corpo about it, but would sell actually pretty well. Yeah, I don't think it's too. Um, I I do wonder how much they're going to cost, and if you can buy them separately, because I think I think we'd run into a problem. Bundle. Just like Valorant, hundred dollars. <laughs> you get the yeah, you get the Mercy one, you get the Reaper, Ryan, May, and you get um, Jung Rai one as well. Maybe. But Dude, I, I actually bought that Valorant Dragon collection, and I probably played like less than fifty Expensive. hours of Valorant. 
like, it's like hundred bucks. I'm I'm curious. I, I hope rough. we don't shoehorn ourselves into like a bundle. Like you could do the bundles, but I would really hope we don't see that's the only way to get the skin because a lot like most people and Overwatch and the devs are obviously aware of this. Most people probably play like two heroes like casually, yeah. maybe maybe a couple more. You know, if you're a support player, maybe you play Ana mainly. Like for myself, I look on my hero. If I look on my like hero lifelong time played, Ana and Zen are my top. And like by a mile, and then it's like widow. Yeah, you'll you'll be able. To, you'll sh they've already separated the skins in the bundles to let you buy individual stuff in this. Yeah, I'm, right. You'll okay. have both options. You'll have both options. Is that okay? Is that confirmed? Cool. No, that's in, in the current bundles, you can already buy the individual oh, skins as sorry. well as the bundles. Sorry, sure. So, so yeah, they will, I, they I'm will hoping continue that forward. Yeah, I'm hoping that's the case because if there's we... no reason not to continue that. So. Exactly, but if there is a point where like you can only buy it in a bundle, like Valorant. I think then that's a bit of an issue. No, Valorant, because... you can buy them individually as well, but they're just very expensive. Oh, they're just more expensive, right? They're yeah, unbelievably they're just... expensive if you yes. buy them individually. Right. I just, I don't know. What, what do you guys think about the price point? What do you think a, a, a gun skit, we'll say Reaper for, or like Ryan, but like oh. what do you think the price point would be? Off yeah, the top no, of your no. head, what would you pay for a Ryan Hammer? I'm the job? wrong person to ask, Joss. Like, you are, you're a millionaire, so you'd pay anything. There's two. Uh, there's two... There's two answers. There's what you would you sorry. There's two questions. There's what would you pay? Yeah. And then there's what would Blizzard actually charge you? Sure. Like, so, but real okay, <laughs> sure. But like, things. realistically, how much would you expect them to cost? Like, because you could be like, I want them to cost a dollar. Like, don't be a don't be a dickhead. But like, you know what I mean? Like, what would you expect? I'm gonna be real to with you. If the quality is actually good, and they go down the Valorant route of like making the quality good with animation stuff, it should probably be like fifteen hundred coins. Or one character's gun skin, which okay. is which is actually expensive because what is a what is a legendary skin current like two thousand or well or some of them are like nineteen hundred coins cheaper now yeah like some of them are what are the legendary like, skins cost again like I think not, if you buy them from like hero gallery coins, yeah. then nineteen hundred because that's how much yeah I bought so like the one they're for, like but... the the weapon skin is nearly as expensive as a whole legendary but the weapon skin is far more versatile because you can put them on any skin you can wear them anywhere. And it's just, not just bound to one skin, so it's. I that, to me, I'm actually probably underselling it. Maybe the weapon skins are probably going to end up being 1900 as well. Wait, are you talking for better one than hero? Actual... Like, if you buy yes. the mercy yeah. weapon skin, you just get it for mercy, right? Or do you get it for all heroes? Oh, no, you... I'm talking well, about individual only hurt, heroes. She can use the Cadacious staff, or whatever. But it's exactly, like, yeah. but I'm saying it's better value than an individual skin because this gun skin you can use in combination with any skin. Yeah. So it's better value is what I'm saying. So I don't know. I, think... I don't see I don't I see imagine... why it would be any cheap. I don't see why it would be any cheaper than a current legendary. Really? I think that's too high. I, if they I think if they priced it at legendary skin price, I think they I think they cop a lot of shit for it. I, I th if the if the value is good, it might not be sure. too bad. But... I mean, they have sound effects like I saw in the clip, like Ryan was swinging around, it had I think a cool sound a effect draw, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. That is a massive draw to people. Yeah, like again, customization's huge. In my mind i would imagine i i don't think they'd be a thousand i think that's maybe a little bit too deep. at least like just thing. on just on like how like um valorant does it and other games do it and their monetizations i think maybe 1400 is like a i would have like said like 10 bucks like 9.99 sure i mean if it that's is a thousand I think coins it's... like that's a thousand johnny that's too low there's no way to do it for a thousand the, the most realistic and, and i mean this sucks to hear but it's probably like gaming the way you buy coins, you know, the, like the, the way they price. Yeah, yeah, that'll be it. That'll oh, be sure. It. So, so like, it'll be eleven $1 hundred. Yeah. In, yeah. So, Maybe. so I don't know. you also have to remember, by the way, they're more incentivized, and not just Blizzard, everybody, every company, are more incentivized to sell it for more expensive first. Because if you fuck that up, you can always go backwards and make it cheaper. But you can't make something low and then rack up the price later. That that's would true. be bad. Yeah, so it ha it, they're more incentivized to set high and then and then drop it later if it's bad. They're probably going to set high, what I'm thinking. That's why I said at least 15, but I think it could go as high as 19. I, I hope they're less than 1,500 each. But I, I do think it's... I think it's a really good addition to the game overall. I think people have been wanting this for a long time, and more customization to your character is always going to be good. And like I mentioned before, there's even more possibilities for weapon skins than there are just normal skins, because you have to tie yes. the weapon skin to the actual skin normally. So, like um zenyata's jonak skin like the orbs have to match the actual skin itself that makes sense if they were mismatching it would look weird but now 
with weapon skins, they can be literally anything because you can use them on every skin that you own. So yeah, I, I'm really happy that they're adding this. I think it's about fucking time. <laughs> Give me yeah. trackers. Give me Apex fucking Legends trackers. God Wait, damn Wait, what's it. trackers? Trackers in Apex Legends, when you load into games, it shows like... You can customize your trackers on your little uh, player card because you have your player card, you have your character model, um, and there's like, you know, common, uncommon. Like, mm. if you have an epic one, your character does like an animation or whatever. Like, oh, my Valkyrie one, she like rolls in and pulls a pistol, and then like the frame is also another thing. And my one's like a space one with um, kanji on it. And then my trackers I have from like some old event, but it tracks my wins, losses, and damage or kills. And it has like a little picture on it too. But I really want profile trackers. I know we have this profile thing at the moment, but like give me on my actual profile, my big playtime where it says Anna most played, give me a little banner at the bottom where I could pre-select like, oh, if you view my profile, you'll see my wins, losses and stuff. And like, there's Anna. Like, I, I would really give me profile. I really, I really like that um, thing of Apex. So yeah, I mean, it's more money, Blizzard. Just more money. put them in the battle pass. Just <laughs> I'm going to be honest, like, like, all the content and stuff coming in Season 8, like, I feel like this is one... I don't know if this is recency bias, but, like, one of the best, like, we've had maybe since... For like content, I think. Especially with weapon skin. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I just... I just like, th it feels like there's so much stuff. You know, like, there's the Christmas mode, and then there's Chinese New Year's coming out, there's Prop Hunt, there's skins, weapon skins. Like, I just feel like there's so much going on. Like, it's actually... Although, like, with PvE coming out, I'd probably say that's the biggest patch they've ever had. And it was. Yeah. They, they did say, like, yeah, this is totally. the biggest patch we've ever had. And I think that yeah. that was more content-filled than this one. It's just, like, the variety and, like, what kind of, like, game-changing we're actually adding, like, with weapon skins and even the previous season, progress, the progression of your characters. That was quite big as well. Yeah, and I think... Hey, Dexo, they got it right. We're we're knocking out hella content recently. Yeah. Updates. Cool. It's awesome. You love to see yeah. it. Love to see it. It is pretty wicked. Although yeah. I, I can't play Malgrim ranked yet. Or like I haven't seen Malgrim ranked, obviously. So I play Malga. Yeah, you played Malga really really What was your experience playing Malga? Um, so my first game of Malga, I like top damage by an uh, unbelievable amount. I just <laughs> shredded the entire enemy team <laughs> destroyed the opposition um, yeah it's he's kind of disgusting um so the they buffed him from the the trial during blizzcon to now so i believe his medium range what were the buffs again there's this patch notes we can look at as well but he's what he's more accurate in the medium range hawk had a, had a bit of a, a take on that he actually quite enjoys that yeah he's really good at poke i think he's a good poke hero i don't know if you can necessarily just like play him as a poke tank it doesn't have a shield, it doesn't have damage mitigation. His poke damage is really nice. So you can quite reliably uh, use one gun at, gun at a time. The left click gun, the incendiary gun, lights people on fire. Good DPS, you can get some pretty reliable headshots in it as well. And the accuracy is like not bad. So yeah, at a medium range, you can do some decent damage with that. You swap between your left and right click to set people on fire, then, then crit them and stuff like that um he's just a boring hero i don't i think the design is super boring because <laughs> okay it's, it's, it's as if you're just Yikes. playing bastion on tank you're just playing bastion in a tank position and there's nothing about him that's super interesting you like like you're just holding you're just holding down left click and then sometimes right click and then sometimes both at the same time and um you know the the the, the damage mitigation the, it doesn't exist and you you have the cardiac overdrive which heals you that's nice but it's, again, it's not really interesting, is it? You don't it's like not the like ultimate? It, it ultimate's like the most interesting part about the kit, but even then, it's like kind of boring. I don't, I don't find the ultimate to be that engaging either. In fact, I think it's like, if anything, probably annoying for the enemy to play against. And in some levels, maybe even kind of boring for you as well. Because it's not, I don't know, it's not as cool as a shadow. It's not as cool as a grav, and it's, it's. It's not as guaranteed to really do anything either. There's there's plenty of times where you jump in, you do your ultimate, and then you just die. Like the enemy team that gets caught and they can still shoot you, actually, the most ideal way to use ultimate, uh, potentially, is to just single out one or two players, and they get cut off from the rest of their team, get blocked off by a shield, and then you can get a player advantage that way. If you actually trap too many players, they just kill you. They just turn around and shoot you. Uh, it doesn't do a lot. Unless your team can combo up and combo some other ultimates in there, do something crazy inside the cage. 
almost better to cage less players. When I like engage, I think I got an, oh, I got a big cage ultimate. I die. Like I just like wow, I melted. And he does melt even the one hundred armor. He, he got some armors, 100, 150. He got some armor since the buff. It helps, but he's still like massive roadhog level hitbox, giant head. Low They've hero reduced the because, head hitbox size too. That uh, that's the thing. Like even then, yeah, still still giant head and. Each, I believe, each minigun reduce your movement speed by 15% when you fire. So he can be really slow when you're firing, especially both. And you're just a target. You are just sitting there eating crap. And then there's the problem with Anna, as Anna just completely counters him, counters in his entire kit. Uh, and so the, every game with Malga ends up being Anna Kuriko on both teams, because you need the Anna to shut down the other Malga, and you need the Curry to help your Malga stay alive and cleanse the, the, the sleeps and the bios. So... Yeah, every game just devolves into the same crap. So it's it's a little boring, I think. I mean, he's... I wouldn't say he's boring to play. Like, played him a little bit. But he's pretty fun. Like, as a hero. Being able to slam in and stuff like that. I don't think he's good in competitive He's, he's at all. fun in, like, a low IQ way. But it's not an engaging hero. <laughs> in it's a not low like, IQ yeah, way? Yeah, it's not what like you're playing that? Sigma or Doom sure. or something where, like, you have to really think about how you're going to play this game, what you're going to do. It, okay. it, it's like playing Winston with no primal. And, and Winston with no primal just feels low IQ. Winston with no primal, no right click, I'll say. Right. What it feels like. That's, wow. That's a tough comparison. In I terms think, of, like, in terms of with no primal. being a low IQ character. Wow. I think the character's kind of fun. You do, again, you leap in, you jump in, you fire two humongous guns. Like the, ca the feel of the character is cool, right? And I think that's obviously what they, I think that's what Blizzard did very well, is like the feel of the character being, the design obviously is very cool. But when it comes to, competitive and the standpoint in competitive the character is not good and it, i don't think he will be good because anna just dominates him like absolutely dominates him and like he's such a big hitbox too and like there's no mitigation factor you have like your adrenaline exactly. and stuff but there's no like shield matrix like all these kind of bits and pieces that are so valuable to like tanks at the top level um you could argue jq but like jq is normally very good when it's like a very specific bomb, but when she's broken, obviously JQ last year when she was perma pick because how she fucking sick shout was. Um, it, that was still pretty good to be she's fair. She's interesting because at least you got knife play. At least Rampage, like you have to, you know, have to be tactical within. Nah, you hate Maga. Avril hates Maga. This, I got a point in this comment. Day. This is a goaded comment from the chat. Felix says, Malga is like all the wrestle without any other abilities, and that's oh, based God. as fuck. That's that's incredibly true. Oh. That's you actually a really interesting. Playing take. Arisa with no other buttons, you're just Super playing Arisa and holding down. <laughs> yeah. You're just holding down left click and then right click and then sometimes both, and that's the entire kit. That's all you do right. on this hero. It's that's like a pretty based comment. I I never really thought about it like that. Yeah, because all Arisa was literally just holding down left click, and then you just, you just hit don't a do fucking, anything on this hero. A, yeah, you hit a shield and then you're just like, okay, I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Three, two, one, pull. Three, two, one, pull. Three, obviously, you're not pulling like, anybody is, as Malga, but... Is it fun just to, like, sit there and do a ton of damage? Because I, I did unbelievable amounts of damage on this hero. Like, that's fun, but it's as fun as Old Bastion, where you just press shift and sit on the payload and then hold down left click and that's all you do. It's about as fun as that. I don't know why it's so funny. I just I just see Avril like gameplay just like I did unbelievable amounts of damage. Like <laughs> I just Yeah, but it was just like it that wasn't that's like not the type of fun I'm looking for. I'm looking for my favorite tank at the moment is Doom, the Scott's demise, because it's just a well designed hero where like it's you have to think about what you're doing all the time. Right mobility kit, the feel of the hero feels great, and just everything just works. And he just got buff, which is great. Uh, unless you're a support player and um so yeah it's it's a th i want a real thinking man's tank and i, I don't want to just hold down thinking left click and then right click and then both is there any thinking man's tank right now is that like sigma i mean yeah, sigma, sigma is, still is broken. The it's one of the ultimate thinking well, man's not broken, tanks but still sigma, very sigma is amazing i love sigma. the oppenheimer tank yeah. it's not broken what about either. the physics Oh, well, that's tough. I feel like in general, like the community sentiment, like I just showed that SK tweet and Hawk, you know, is just, I mean, he's nice fine. Change, just like it's, you know, like, okay. yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'd stray as far as Avril says, and though he's boring, I think the hero is still cool and he, he is fun to play. You can be but, cool and boring. I mean, sure. Yeah, is that how you describe yourself? Cool and boring? I don't, I don't get up to much. So yeah, that's a compliment. I'll take cool. <laughs> the cool, the cool is enough for me. Even if it means I have to be wrong, I'll take the call. 
I think he's cool I, hero. I, I, cool. I think he's fun to play, but like I just don't think competitive wise, like he has any any footing whatsoever. Counted a lot and like he what doesn't... comp does he get played in? There's not there's no like real. That's it. I think. Oh, maybe poke. Like again, mid range damage is pretty decent, but I mean, poke is way better with Sigma because he gets in shield rush is like is, it, is he really better than the current rush tanks? No. Oh. No. no. I, don't really I just see don't. It in... But. It... I think we discussed this last week, and I feel like I reiterate this a lot, and the chat's probably going to flame the fuck out of me for it, but you, you don't have to make a tank good. You don't have to make a hero good sure. for it to feel good and for it to be fun. It doesn't have to be that way, and I think they're okay with releasing tanks like that because Flat Chat and the majority of people that we watch a lot in Overwatch League, Overwatch Esports, etc., are very good players. Like, our perception is very skewed towards, like, the 0.01. For the casual player base, I think Malga's probably a massive fucking hit. Yeah. Because for, character's fun as fuck. If you're, if you're a gold console player, this hero is amazing. Also so, personality. Character has tons of personality. So yeah, tons of personality. And like, yeah, like... It's a the, New Zealand actor, by the way. So I, and I've seen oh, him. So he, he was actually in... He, he's, he was the gold Power Ranger in one of the Power Ranger spinoffs. Oh, and he was also he gold crazy. Power uh, Ranger. Yeah, he was also in Luke and Hobbs, the uh, Fast and Furious spinoff. But he's been in a lot of spinoffs. He was wow, in Luke awesome. and Hobbs. He was only a side character, but he was in the spinoff. Yeah, he was in that movie. That's pretty cool. What? He's, he's from New Zealand, so that's cool. Wow. Wow. Um, there is one to... point in the patch notes I wanted to bring up, by the way, which was oh. the, the BAP change. Like, BAP is very powerful right now. It's very strong. The primary fire ammo reduced from 45 to 36 didn't matter who's surprised nobody like it just doesn't matter like that's such an inconsequential change and not the reason why bap is so strong right now i just thought that was really funny because i played bap yesterday um and i'm like i'm gonna try and play this character and see how it feels am i running out of ammo more am i not being able to put as much damage down like uh, down range kind of thing no nah. no nah. that didn't matter i'm still pumping out the same amount of damage because reloads in overwatch historically have been very quick they're not slow things at all. They are something that, especially with BAP, you do fairly... Well, actually, with BAP, I guess you don't really need to do it that often uh, because you're using the healing grenade too. But, like, you're healing for two different purposes. So, yeah, I just thought that change was so... It, we commented on the patch notes uh, last week. saw them. But, like, some of these changes are just so inconsequential. It didn't really shift the needle one way or the other um, on a lot of these. So, yeah, I, uh, the patch... Yeah. We didn't talk about that. the carry change, did we? Um, oh, I don't think we did actually. No, I don't really remember. Oh no, we did. I remember the projectile speed increases, which were, uh, I've not played oh, really? carry in this latest patch, to be fair. Um, but that must feel pretty good because I've uh, the problem with carry yeah, yeah. and uh, first time I played her too, and I can imagine a lot of other people felt like this too because think of healing as a character in Overwatch or carry, like how quick healing was to like shoot, for example, like Baps right click. It, Lower than Arna's, um, especially when you're like scoped in and stuff. Um, Mercy's obviously is just a beam, or it's Lucio, but like her offative felt so weak because it travels so slow. So this probably feels super good. I'll play some Kiri today actually and just see how it feels. Um, but yeah, also the vulnerability reduced. I mean, that, maybe we... the, right. the amount of times I nearly save someone for the. Uh, and the cards the... don't reach you? Yeah. This... Yeah, I mean. It's crazy. It's like, <laughs> it's like one of the most frustrating heals I think in the game. Um, if you're like kind of on the edge of where the lock on is, and yeah, it's just like, bro, oh, my cards didn't reach you in time, buddy. I'm sorry, man. Like, yeah, it's probably one of the more frustrating like deaths you can have when you see the fucking cards, like, and you're already dead, and you're like, bro, bro. I will they be very curious as to how Ram looks on this patch because I know that was a, a point of contention in terms of the patch notes. He got a, a decent buff. Um, Doom obviously got quite buffed, so. I think the tank pool should open up. Sigma did, Sigma did not really get nerfed. That's fine because I think other tanks catching up is probably a good enough move to allow other tanks to be in the meta. I don't think there's any tournaments going to be played on the live patch for a while. All the tournaments that I that are currently running like flash shops, they're going to be played on OPR. Maybe NA could be on the new patch. Are they played the, on OPR? Korea is going to be on OPR. Korea is going to finish on the same patch as we were uh on season seven so korea is not going to be on season eight but maybe na and eu could be on season eight. i don't know yet 
That'd be kind of crazy if they were on season eight. But like, it won't stop the prevalence of Sig, Bap, etc. Because Poke is still strong. Bastion is still very strong in Poke. The nade through the window, Bastion one shot. Or, no? or did he get um, buffed? Sigma is still strong and BAP. And like, there's a lot of these changes that didn't make sense and didn't like target the reasons why characters were strong to begin with and they were strong because they were together um, kind of thing. That's my only kind of gripe. And I just think, I, I just found it funny with the BAP change because I'm like, it's so inconsequential. Like it just doesn't matter because reloads and overwatch are just so quick. Apart from when you're like, Reloading on an empty mag, I think that's definitely slower. I'm not sure how sl much uh, slower it is, but like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Also, was, the uh, tracer buff. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Tracer buff the tracer week. buff. Yeah, the tracer buff is kind of awesome. Um, five point five to six damage. I know the streamers yeah, are freaking out about that. All the streamers are like, uh, they're, they're doing the react to the tracer damage chain. We'll see what, what happens yeah. there. That could be really interesting. I mean, tracer being like perma meta is like one of the most, you know, debated, so, and controversial this... topics in balance. I don't know if Poke is going to be the predominant cop because Winston got buffed, Doom got buffed, Tracer got buffed. Doom did get buffed, yeah. yeah. There, there's a Strange. lot of dive buffs. Like, I, I don't know yeah. if Poke's going to be the, the go-to. It could just Maybe be a not. style thing. That's probably good for the game. I, I, I would like both or, or more styles to be prevalent. Yeah. yeah. I personally don't really like playing Poke, so yeah, I'm down for dive. <laughs> yeah. I like Poke. Maybe we'll see if they play the new patch in uh, the holiday showdown. Yeah. North America. And, uh, I can almost guarantee if they're playing the new patch, uh, Mauga will not. <laughs> There's just no way. Probably Maybe not that's going to come to bite me. Like, I don't think he's good enough so, anyway. I don't think uh, he's good enough here to be There's just played, no way so. that character gets played. Even if they enable them, I don't think they pick him. All right. If we're going to be like clueless. Avril, do you want to do you want to recap the um, the little oh, the little yeah. co-stream you had here for uh, for flash ups? Yeah. Korea? I. Uh, How did co-stream go? I promise. Very good. Very positive. Yeah. So thank you to all the people that tuned into the co-stream. We had we had a quite a decent turnout. So thanks for being there, guys. Appreciate the support. I did the second day with hexagrams. Um, so that was fun as well. So the the rundown essentially is I believe it started with the Isohan eight one five game, the lower bracket, then Runaway Poker Face, and then we ran through the rest of the games of the course of the two days. So we had six matches total. Um, I will say this, after watching Team 815, so if we look at the Isohan 815 game, which went to five maps, I am not surprised that 815 beats Murphs in the upper bracket. Because Decay and Choi, but especially Decay, bro is pounding. Dude is like... I saw some clips. So, they were crazy. Clips, yeah. so, so good. That map four, where it went to 119 meters per team, that is a map that you should rewatch, whether that's the VOD from my Twitch, or whether you want to go to the Korea channel to get their version, whatever. But that Esperanza between 815 and Isohan, the ending is, I mean, I don't know if I want to split it. Okay, I'll just, we'll, we'll talk about it. We're, we had to talk about it, so I'll talk about it. The K went full to carry mode. If there is ever a compilation of best to carry moments, this one's up there. This one's in that top three, maybe your top one. It's it's in there as like one of the most quintessential to carry moments ever. But he just said, I'm not losing. Take the game to my hands and force this win no matter what. And he did that. He just he, he completely 1v9 the game in a way that was just like mind blowing. So he had Decay, my king. He was so good this series. I'm a little disappointed they didn't win, but Isohan winning is probably good because they're married and someone can still get to play when they come back from Korea, which I believe they're probably back by now. Uh, map 5 circle was a bit of a disappointment because it was just a comp gap because Kellen can't play any Sigma and. Kalios is just gap him on that matchup, and he's just going to win on a, a Sigma map. But yeah, good series. Um, Runaway, unfortunately, just not a team that is in this particular meta. They they just Mag's not going to be able to play enough heroes. Yaki actually did really well for all the flack that Yaki is getting for his season on Glads. Uh, he did well in in the matchup that I saw on the Tracer. Uh, he he tried a little bit of Genji. It was okay. Gangnam Jin was actually really good on the Ana, so good to see him finally back on flex support. Carried quite a little bit on the, the Ana, and he still had a decent performance on the Bojin uh, as well. The team was just fine. It was it wasn't powerful enough. They didn't have enough, you know, real engine power to get them through. They they were hard forcing dive, which is fine if you have Gushu on your team, but not fine if Mag is not able to play that level and. Oh, your team doesn't have two years worth of dive coordination that Spark have. 
so their their team was going to be pretty limited unfortunately um then you have the hamster o2 situation and now i can also also understand why o2 are one of the top teams in this and how they just completely swept isohan twice if you look at uh, the bracket upper bracket they 3 0 isohan and then the lower bracket part of the 3 0 them again not close games by the way o2 are actually really legit so you want to see what all of these rookies from 2022 look like when they're on a team together that's a team of friends where they all trust each other and the vibes are good and they're all in korea and there's no excuses and everyone's like playing their best level um everyone popped off he sang looked as amazing as ever i think he played better than he even looked on vancouver it was better than he looked on the shock didn't see profit or viper at all probe is still you know he, that was still a good performance max actually performed super well. i think most of the people watching on the english side i obviously i had all the english viewers were very surprised that max is actually good at the game everyone was just convinced that max is a bad player but i think he was just bad on shock i think shock made him look bad i think he performed badly on the shock he actually played super well at, in the series across the board on with that sigma junker queen i don't remember what else he played those are his main heroes right and um yeah he looked super competent carried the game at various levels and both babel and bliss were were very good as well and the o2 high school in general they just they had a lot of firepower look coordinated look like they were having a good time so yeah this is what all of these rookies who i believe every single player on this team was a rookie in this year except for babel who was on london in 2020 i believe for everyone else they're a rookie this year and i think a lot of people was like well these rookies weren't very good this year but i think for everybody that was a rookie this year their situations weren't good either so you start to see what their real potential looks like then you have hamster which to no one's surprise is obviously the favorite but they didn't have a clean run. They nearly lost O2 in the upper bracket. That was a five mapper. Uh, another super close Esperanza. Proper and Stalker looked really good. I'm not a fan of how much Lucio and Moira were there forcing. And this time, you can't even say it was because of Rush. Because Rush is not coaching the team. They don't even have a coach, by the way. I think they're one of the only teams that don't have a coach. And Hamster, I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's the the, the fearless harm bit effect. I don't know if it's just your fielder. But they, they just hard forced Lucio and Moira for like, 80 percent of the games they played sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't ha harmbin really tried to force the ram and, and just by the way this is the season seven patch not season eight ram is not buffed ram is not strong they tried to hard force the ram multiple times i don't think that was the best idea and and Harbin actually did eventually play sigma and it did look good but he just didn't he just was very reluctant bringing sigma out like i don't know if he had just ptsd from being gapped by Vasola or what but he was just not willing to bring the sigma out until the end then when he finally brought it out it actually did look good but hamster are not like they're not a perfect team but they do look like the best team but not by an extreme margin i think there is room for o2 high school to still beat them and for an iso han that has merit in someone to do that as well the dallas fueled rush effect wanting to play lucian Moira. just 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 yeet in you know my immediate thought is just like oh man it sucks we won't be able to see hamster against like some of the best <laughs> the teams in, in in europe and na but maybe that's 2024 i don't know um because you have these isolated tournaments now where all these korean players amazing korean players are playing each other and hamster is obviously winning it but like i don't know i want to see them play against the north american european flash ups teams but yeah not that it'd be close thing anything, is, uh, but things not going to happen for that one no. sadly Bad. do you uh, wish that was english I, coverage i'll say i didn't like, I didn't cover poker face but they're i mean they they played well nothing really stand out they had one a really close game versus isohan and that would have been really embarrassing for isohan where like i believe someone in merit just got knocked out of uh e-league a day or two days before an f16 they came third yeah. then for isohan to then not make it and for merit and someone to come back to nothing would have been really tragic so isohan barely made it through versus poker face uh, and Bellas Rhea on that team. So, yeah, they did they did fine, but I think Pokerface were, were not going to have the firepower to make it 2D. Arns actually was pretty impressed. I thought Arns was going to be a little bit washed on Isohan, but he actually came through well, played well. Kalios is another underrated player. He's obviously in a Sigma meta, so he's thriving on picks that are going to be strong for him. So, yeah, there's a chance here. I, I would have been very disappointed if this entire tournament was just hamster dominating. But I think all the three teams remaining for the Korea side are all strong enough that it's not like a hundred percent clear who the winner is going to be that leaves us to the actual finals of the event where if you go to the top and click on the finals tab for apac 
uh we'll have the following matches coming on this week and it actually starts tomorrow or for me it'll be later tonight Fuck, I have a busy day today i gotta go to bed and then do my regular stuff and then midnight come home and stream P this game. pst yeah so for yep. the na viewers it's gonna start pretty late but yeah it's gonna be starting if Teams are going to be the three Korean teams we talked about that qualified. If you're in Europe, get the morning coffee. Yeah, you know. Oh, I, shout out to the Eat Euros. I had a lot of Europeans in my chat. I had a lot of yeah. uh, the EU viewers. I think most of the NA viewers were from EU, actually. Yeah. And then they were great. When I was in Sweden, I used to wake up in the morning, like grab a cup of coffee and watch Apex. <laughs> that, was, that was the European vibe. Yeah. You have Daff from Southeast Asia. Soggy's playing on that. He's probably the notable player on that Daff team. You have Vesta Crew and Varel. Uh, Varel is the Japanese mm -hmm. national team for the World Cup, so everyone remembers them. They beat France, so that's a very exciting team. Yep. Probably not going to expect too much out of these teams in terms of beating the Korean teams. I think if it was versus some of the weaker Korean teams, maybe against the top three Korean teams here, these top three teams play too stacked to probably even drop maps to anybody else, so It'll be fun because it's all on land and, and it'll be fun for the other three teams to be on land. So we're expecting a top three to be all three Korean teams with a Korea versus Korea. Yeah, I mean, one of Daff and Varel will qualify for the top four, right? Probably Varel because they're Japan. Exactly, yeah. So, well, I mean, then you got to play either, probably you got to play Hamster in the first round. So, probably, yeah. Actually. Keen to see Isohan with, with someone in Merit back in. They'll have pretty limited time to gel because someone in Merit have been in, in Saudi the whole time, and so they haven't been with them, so it'll be a little bit tough. But, um, yeah, matches are, are soon, guys. Matches are coming in today, later today, in, in uh, 12 hours, just about 12 hours. Yeah, and the finals are on Sunday. So, finals takes place. I'll this be streaming weekend. again. If you, want, if you want to, if you want to join me in the Koshu, I will be streaming on twitch.tv slash Avril again. Yep. Let's go. Come by. Let's go. All right. Quick recap. Quick recap of the Saudi League as well. And then we can, then we can wrap up here. Twisted Minds won. Um, I don't think there's any sounds pretty unsurprising, major but, surprises. Yeah, I think no GK could have. There. GK improved their result from the upper bracket slightly. F16 in the bottle bracket, that's someone in Merit's team that we talked about a little bit yep. earlier on. Um, I think a lot of people would have expected their team to maybe be the better team compared to GK, but the, the player that really stood out again that, that I highlighted last week is this guy Rojo, or otherwise known as Teenage, in the game. Yeah, he's insanely good. He's he, Unter's like, Unter's basically calling him a hacker in a, in a jovial way. He's obviously trying to accuse him or good anything. Sign. Like, he's so good, the dude is like hacking. So... You have really good, insane new talent coming on through that are doing a lot. Um, yeah, that just shows that there's more talent outside of the, the regular Twisted Minds guys, which is positive for the region. They need that. They want that. Um, but Twisted Minds, currently, they dominate the region, right? Because that's the, that's the national team. That's the KSA team that just recently won the World Cup with, with Calix on the roster as well. Hardy, Hardy was in the audience the whole Hardy time. Too. Hardy didn't play. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, every time, was, every yes. time the camera panned past, <laughs> Hardy was sitting in the audience with with Hunter talking shit, <laughs> yeah. and they never. And Hardy didn't play the whole time. He's just cheering on the fellas. But they got a big trophy at the end. They all got medals. Um, so it was a it was a pretty big event. It was a huge trophy as well. And Quartz got MVP. And Quartz at the moment, he's he's on a real run of it because a yeah. lot of people I mean, hyped about Quartz. Hunter he had an insane run in the World Cup, and he looked really good in this tournament as well. Hunter was saying to me, I did a deep dive of Hunter the other day, and like. He was saying he's the best. Oh, uh, trophy. He's the best DPS right now, like in the game. Uh, like across DPS. everybody. Yeah, not flex DPS. He just said DPS, I think. Yeah, it, but yeah, he he reckons he's the best in the game right now. Dude, that trophy is like insane. Huge. It's it's a big boy. It's a big boy trophy. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, pretty cool. And I saw the tweets afterwards from the Twitter mind players. They're just like, we literally won everything this year. On all contenders, yeah. won the World Cup, won Saudi League. Like, what more do you want from us? Like, we want everything. So, that's pretty funny, too. They just dominated everything. Um, they could dominate. Obviously, not the Overwatch League, because they didn't play at Overwatch League. But, um, if only Majed didn't leave Mayhem, he could have he won the Overwatch League, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of was a Toronto Defiant. Tough. I had that thought as well. Just, like, poor Sauna. 
was on Florida Mayhem start of the year and then just like shipped him on Spitfire. Gone after the battle ring. Damn, Damn dude. Damn. He's still Marker, got, who no, he's got rings still on, on the ring. On Sauna. Wait, Sonos didn't got a ring? No, he did not. Yeah. He did He did not? Re Wait, no, he really? Didn't. No, he the, isn't his cut? Isn't his cut? Uh, isn't Finland on the fucking ring? No, itself? that was just like the example design. It also says Sweden on the example design, but I'm like, there's no. Oh, so I think it's just example countries. Oh, okay, might be, might be, might be. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe it's not. I guess there, there's a minimum amount of games to qualify. He did play like a couple of games at the start of the season, but I don't know. Yeah, I think you have to be part of the team during the playoffs minimum. I guess. Um, next Thursday, we got, um, the holiday showdown, uh, flash ups, I mean, starting for, uh, NA, NEU. So, if I had to guess, probably be an episode next week, just like previewing flash ups for NA and NEU, um, that playoffs taking place and, uh, also recapping the Apex stuff that's going to go down this week. So, um, I think we'll chat more about that then. Uh, but otherwise, I don't have anything else for you, fellas. Unless there's anything else we want to bring up. Again, it's the off-season. Uh, not like... right now. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's not much to talk about. We talk about the game, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could bring pretty back good some about tier list one? and shit. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. Too, it's too two two-hour <clears throat> episode almost. I complain. Yep. So we're putting in work here in the off-season. Entertaining our viewers, our fans. So true. We appreciate you being here, watching the episode. Sticking with us during the off -season. We try. We try our best. Or, well, not our best. But we try a little bit. On the show, at least. No, we try our best. We try a little bit. Try a little bit. Make sure you go to expressvpn.com slash overwatch. Oh. Slash overwatch. Really crucial there. Okay? Flash. Yeah. Support the show. Support the podcast. And we'll continue the off-season content. And maybe at some point, it won't be the off-season next year. And maybe we can keep talking about like tier one stuff. Maybe I thought about this this morning. Maybe we should just... You know, take some time to invite some more players and stuff. You know, chat to players on here. You know, we had those uh, episodes with Dante this year. Uh, we had one with, uh, I think it was Dante and Jake earlier this year. Maybe some coach. What do you think, fellas? Maybe invite some Yeah, I mean, people on. Up. Yeah, just get yeah, people in, bro. So. Well, I actually got an idea for next week since we're, if you're going to do a preview of uh, NA Flash Shops and stuff. I won't be here, Avril. So you can do whatever you want. Hopefully Solomon is here, because otherwise I don't know how it's going to get produced. But. Oh, well, looks like there's no flag chat next week, boys. Unlo no, I think Solomon's back. We're, we're I chilling. hope so. I'm going to pray. pray. Didn't work last time, but maybe it'll work this week. Um, Friends of the week? week, then. Yeah. What do you want to do? I, I had an Go example, the and I forgot about Dick it. Go to for giving us the number one spot. Yeah, maybe. Live service. Dex maybe it's the Cerdo, yeah. Oh, baby. Based Dick Cerdo. Shh. Yeah. I, never, I never thought I would say base Dick Soto, but you know what? This Come time on, do, you have, do, do you have an option? Do you have an option here? I'm, I'm totally open to suggestions here. And the chat Actually, as well. did we... Did we cover... When did Mitch win his esports award, by the way? Oh, true. That, Mitch let's, do Mitch. Yeah. let's do Mitch. Let's do Mitch, because he won... He uh, an award, between though. our last episode and he this episode? He finally like, fucking won, bro. Jesus Christ. Rigged awards, Play by bro. player of the year. Yeah. Play by player of the year. Right, Mitch. Okay, yes, give it to Mitch. All right. Friends for the week goes to, uh, goes to Mitch. For winning. Hell yeah. Of the year. So you get an award for winning an w. award. W. Finally, Overwatch gets a dub, bro. Yeah. By the sorry, way, did sorry, he get no. his award from the airport or no? Because he, he lost his luggage. <laughs> he lost his award. So his trophy got lost funny. in the luggage. Bro, that is crazy. So the, the biggest the irony is he's lines. been waiting his whole waiting his whole career for this award. He's been shit-talking the esports awards for like a whole decade. Okay, not that long. The whole time, he finally wins. A decade. And then he has... And then he has his trophy like lost in the luggage. That'd be L. Spirit Airlines. Thing. L. I don't know if it, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it was. I, think I it hope he gets it back. Yeah. Non player okay. of the week, Spirit Airlines, says Adrian. Agreed, Adrian. All right. All right. That does it for Power to Overwatch episode 205. Thank you, Joss and Avril, for being here. I really right, appreciate no it. Appreciate you showing up and always being Watch on time. Two. Being here to chat. Yeah, I appreciate it. And now you can go play DC. I'm going to play a watch, actually. I or think they're going to play Lego Fortnite, and I don't want to play. Oh. I'm going to play a watch. Lego Fortnite. Woohoo! All right, got it. Well, if you're watching the episode live on YouTube right now, make sure you head over to Jaws Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jaws, Jaws Cast. Cast. Yes, because I'm not far now. Let's go. All right, go check that out. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you around next week. Maybe, if we have a producer. I don't know. Take care, everybody. We will. Goodbye. See you next week.